Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added to the CCNA course 200-125. And this is section 4.8, Cisco Switch Port Analyzer, or SPAN for short. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to troubleshoot a network problem using Switch Port Analyzer, SPAN. Port mirroring, a packet analyzer, aka sniffer, is typically software that captures packets entering and exiting a network interface card, NIC. The port mirroring feature allows a switch to copy and send Ethernet frame from specific port to a destination port connected to the packet analyzer. The original frame is still forwarded in the usual manner. Now we have to enable port forwarding because if you don't, the switch is going to send like for example this is a source and this is the destination. Even though you have a port analyzer here, the switch will never forward the traffic to the port analyzer. The switch will, f will uh, move the frames from one port to another port looking at the MAC address. For example, this MAC address, that's the source, that's the MAC address, the destination, that's it. It will not flood them. If it was a hub, then fine, it will get all the, all the traffic. But the switch for known unicast uh, frames will never forward them to any other port Apart from the port where it's meant to go so but broadcast yeah you'll get all broadcast frames and and unknown unicast you'll get them all the the sniffer will get them there but not you uh, no known unicast frames so for that we have to, we have to enable port mirroring uh, span terminology ingress traffic this is the traffic that enters the switch egress traffic this is the traffic that leaves the switch source span port this is the port that is is monitored with the use of span feature destination span port this is the port that monitors the source port usually where the packet analyzer IDS or IPS is connected the port is also called the monitoring port span session this is an association of destination port with another or more source port and source VLAN this is a VLAN monitored for traffic analysis local span a span session is the association between the source port or VLANs and a destination port. There are three important things to consider when configuring SPAN. The destination port cannot be the source port and the source port cannot be the destination port. So you can't monitor the port itself. You can't say, okay, I'm monitoring this port and send the traffic to the same port. It just doesn't make sense. The number of destination port is platform dependent. Some platforms allow for more than one destination ports the destination port is no longer a normal switch port. Only monitoring traffic passes through that port. So you can't use this uh, PC or sniffer, we call it a laptop here, you can't use for normal traffic. So that's your just monitoring, just monitoring port. So you can't, a person can't sit there and start uh, surfing the web or, or browsing the domain. Remote span, remote span terminology here, we have a remote span source session. This is the source port VLAN to copy traffic from remote span destination session this is a destination VLAN port to send the traffic to remote span VLAN a unique VLAN is required to transport the traffic from one switch to another VLAN is configured with a remote span VLAN configuration command this VLAN must be defined on all switches in a path and must also be allowed on trunk ports between the source and destination so remote span is when you have a sniffer, for example, or monitoring uh, station, not connected to the same switch where you're monitoring. If this is the source, and say the, the monitoring same switch, that's a local span. But the monitoring machine is on the different switch, then that's a remote span. For that reason, we have to create this VLAN. So that's, that will be a source port, monitoring port. That's the monitoring port. But the destination is on the remote so we have to create this VLAN, our span, uh, remote span VLAN. So the destination will be the VLAN. For this switch, the source will be the VLAN and the destination will be the local port it's connected to. So use the following commands to define the source port and destination port of the span session. For example, monitor session number one, for example, monitor session one, source, where you will identify what monitoring port you're monitoring, what source port you're monitoring. Then monitor session one, destination, where is your sniffer or monitoring uh, software. The administrator needs to capture all the traffic they sent or received by PC1. A packet analyzer is connected to Gigabit02. 
a local span session is created using G01 as a source and G02 as a destination. So, and then to verify it, we do show monitor. That's going to tell us that we are monitoring source port. Both, you can monitor just ingress traffic or egress traffic. But in this case, we are monitoring both. And destination port in G01. Encapsulation native and ingress is disabled. Okay, the next thing what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually configure this. I have router 1 here. I'm going to configure DLS1, uh, PCA and PCC. Now, monitoring software is installed on PCC. So I'm going to monitor the traffic between PCA and router 1. It should be going to the PCC as well. Okay, so what I need to do, I need to connect to router 1 and just start giving the IP addresses just like a normal traffic first and then we look at the monitoring tool. Okay, I've got connection to my access server and I've got connection to router 1 as well as DLS1. So if I say so show session, um, router 1, that's router 1 and DLS1. So if I press 1 here, you can see there's no startup configuration here. So I'll just type no here and control shift 6 X to go to my access server and number 2 to go to, to the DLS. No in there. And that's it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, configure the basic startup configuration first so if I open my notepad I have my basic startup configuration I'm just gonna change the host name here to R1 and these commands I'm just gonna highlight and then copy and paste into my router and the switch I'm not gonna save the config so I'll just copy access the router and just right click to paste it and open my startup configuration just change the name so sw or say dls1 dls1 and just copy and paste okay and paste it there i can save them but i want to do some more configuration and then i'll save it um so just normal configuration router this is router one yeah so r1 interface interface g00 give an ip address ip address 10.134.3255255255.0 description say um r1 to lan and we do not shut down okay so highlight all this copy to router one so control shift six x and one and just right click oh sorry no shut down let's spell, spell it correctly so no shut down okay cool so now i'm going to go to the, my pcs i've got pca uh, this is the lab from previously and uh, pcc okay um change ip addresses to static so pca first and if i look at the ip address of pca 10.134.100 so properties change it from uh, dynamic to static 10.1.34.100 subnet 255.255.255 10. Dot, um, the gateway is 10.1.34.3 and click OK OK do the same for PCC PCC I think I gave it 200 let me have a look oh no let's change that to 200 200 um, okay so we'll go to PCC and IP address 10.1.34.200 10.1.34.3 is the gateway okay we should be able to ping so go to PCA and let's just verify config T sorry IP config um, ping 10.1.34.3 yep and can I ping the other machine 10.1.34.200 yep I can ping the other machine as well cool the monitoring software is installed here so in the Wireshark um, that's what we're going to monitor with right we have not configured anything here uh, yet so what we're going to do is configure um, switch port analyzer we have to do that on the DLS. So if I go to DLS, um, 
we have to say monitor session one source interface what are we monitoring for example let's just see the interfaces yeah again let's see the interfaces what are we gonna do we're gonna monitor this or this interface and we're gonna monitor this interface and the destination is gonna be of PCC okay so this is a local span right so if I go monitor session one source interface um, it's gonna be FA03 and it could be uh, FA012 so we're monitoring both of the interfaces now PCC is not after this is the monitoring tool this is not going to be able to communicate uh, sorry monitoring uh, workstation it's not going to be able to communicate normal on the VLAN so no user should be able to sit there it's not going to be able to sit there and access the internet or anything and then say monitor session one destination interface FA011 okay and show monitor So we have a local session, the monitoring. We're monitoring uh, both ingress and egress ports on FA03, FA012. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the PCC and start the Wireshark. So click start, Wireshark. The Wireshark and capture interface. Only interface that I have on this virtual machine, start now it's going to start capturing all the all the traffic that's going on on the network well we're monitoring everything that's going on between pca and the router so if i go to pca for example and i try ping again the router ping 192 uh, sorry 10.1.34.3 see i got the that ping so i ping from pca to the router but this uh PCC has got that traffic that okay that PC 10.1.34.100 has just pinged the router request reply then we got we are kind of like getting like echoes as well yeah um, what other traffic can we see for example say that we are telneting from PC so telnet telnet uh, 10.1.34.3 Cisco um, Cisco Plus, okay, I don't know the password. I think it was Cisco anyway. But as you can see here, we are seeing the telnet traffic. So here, for example, if I click on one of the telnet traffic, that's my telnet. Right click. Is all traffic is between 100 and 3, yeah, between PCA and router 3, router 1. So follow TCP tree string. So as you can see, I telneted and tried the password Cisco a couple of times. Tried class as well didn't really work okay so I can try again. I can try again I think it I think it was Cisco so if I if I go back to my config class okay let's try that so no the password first password I'm looking for is this password see it's got a space yeah by mistake I put a space the trading spaces up the trading spaces are part of the password so it has a space, so I have to put Cisco in a space. So telnet again, Cisco space, yeah, enable class lambda router on. Show IP interface brief. Okay, so if I go to the TCP stream, uh, so telnet here, telnet, follow the TCP stream, you can see that everything I type. I type the correctly the password now the class Cisco with a space and that's it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you remote sp switch port analyzer and I'm gonna enable I'm gonna bring another switch and as you can see now the monitoring software is not installed in the same switch as it was here but usually it would be it would be scenarios like this yeah where you would have the monitoring software install some in another switch and you're monitoring the switches somewhere else so in DLS 1 we're gonna monitor port 3 and port 12 and we're gonna send the destination it's gonna be remote uh, VLAN 10 remote span and DLS 2 DLS 2 is gonna be the that's gonna be the source and the destination is gonna be FA 011 
Okay, so I need to connect the uh, DLS2. So Control Shift 6 and type DLS2. And no here. I'm gonna go to the configuration and, and copy the startup configuration. So change that to 2. So copy and paste it here. Cool. Now I'm gonna shut down all the interfaces so it doesn't create any traffic. So interface FA01 24 24 shut down. Now I'm gonna only enable 13 and 11. I already moved the cable so interface FA013 uh, no shut. Interface FA011 no shut. Okay. So I did pause it the um, video and I moved this cable that was already here on this DLS1 so I moved it to the DLS2 and um, the configuration is the same so let's just go in first to DLS1 uh, show run and we want to erase the first monitor that we were doing so erase or no negate these commands so type no here no monitor session Okay, well, sorry, go to config, global config. Uh, because the Windows has just shut down that my virtual machine. It's just like, what? Okay, and then no again, and this one here. The old one. Okay, so let me go to my virtual machine and just power them on again. Okay, cool. So, let's see again. This is our lab. So on DLS1, like we said, that's got source, source, these two ports, same as old, and destination is remote VLAN. But the first thing we need to do is we need to go and create that VLAN, yeah? So do show um, VLAN brief. There's nothing, so let's go and create it. So VLAN 10, um, name R span, remote span, and type remote. remote spam cool we need to do that command on the both of the switches so go, I go to the switch DLS2 uh, VLAN 10 let's see if there's any VLAN show VLAN brief I do show VLAN brief ok so uh, VLAN 10 name R spam and remote spam Cool. So I'll go back to router 2, uh, sorry, DLS1, and here I'll do a monitor, config D, and monitor session 1, and then interface uh, source is going to be source interface FA03 and FA012, monitor session 1, destination. It's going to be uh, the remote remote VLAN 10. Okay. On the DLS 2, there's going to be monitor session 1. Source is going to be remote VLAN 10. And monitor session 1, destination is going to be interface FA011 okay so as you can see in DLS1 we are monitoring two ports and destination is VLAN 10 and here it's going to be the source VLAN 10 and destination port 11 here okay so if I go to the PCs again uh, PCA start that and PCC okay let's cancel this, go close this quit without saving and we start another session so we start another like for example this one it won't be able to 10.134.200 but because it's a monitoring software it shouldn't be able to co uh, communicate like like normal in the network you see can't ping so it's not able to communicate because it's just a monitoring software so if I start uh, or monitoring port a uh, Wireshark here 
okay and I'm capturing on that interface start so here for example now I'm gonna start pinging from PCA uh, and now if you know the PCA is connected to DLS1 I can show, show it that for example if I go to DLS1 and show run for, oh no show run show IP interface brief for example you can see the port 1 is on no that's VLAN uh, sorry port 3 is on it's connected to G the router 1 and port 12 is on as well okay so that that is on everything else is down so port 11 is down it was not shut down and nothing else if I go to DLS 2 show run it should be only port 11 up the red show IP sorry show IP interface interface brief so as you can see port 11 it says uh, it's down because it's monitoring yeah it's not working it's just for the monitoring so it's not gonna receive anything this is down uh, port 13 I'll go to DLS 1 and I think I need to turn that up so config I type show IP interface brief and I want to see this port 13 here okay so what I need to do I need to actually enable this interface between the two switches so um, interface FA 013 no shut and that interface has to be doing the trunking so switch port mode trunk command rejected encapsulation auto is not allowed so we need to actually tell switch port trunk encapsulation top one q and switch port switch port now mode trunk should work so if we do show interface trunk, yep, FA013 is trunking, and uh, show span VLAN1, we still not forwarding any traffic, so we wait till we forward the traffic and then we see if our, our span is working. In the meantime, uh, just let's run show uh, monitor. So we, re uh, we are ingress and egress ports of FA013 and 12, we are monitoring and destination is VLAN 10 and check it for uh, DLS2 to show monitor and the source is VLAN 10 and destination is VLAN, uh, port 11. So show span, spanning tree VLAN 1. Okay, nice forwarding. So to test it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to router 1, uh, sorry, uh, PCA. I'm going to ping router 1 from PCA. So ping this address. And I'm going to open the monitoring tool here. here. So Wireshark. Wireshark here. Okay, so we'll see some traffic if some traffic is coming. So capture, interface. And we start there okay cool so ping 10.1.34.3 uh, as you can see our, our monitoring is working perfectly we saw our request uh, from five okay wait <laughs> um, 10.1.34.3 uh, just say up here we see a broadcast message from 10 uh, who has 10.134.3 tell 10.134.100 and we can see the ICMP messages as well they're coming from 100 to 3 we are seeing the echo okay so we see we can see the telnet for example let's try telnet 10.1.34.3 Cisco enable class so if I go to PCC clear that I should see some telnet traffic as well there we go quite a lot so if I right click one say follow the string as you can see everything that we did there so do it show IP interface brief if we can see it again that traffic that's coming now yeah. 
and see everything on that. Whatever we do on the on the PC A, as well as the uh, as well as the um, router port from the router, we can see. Okay, let's just stop this and start again a new one. Uh, Wireshark. And now we cannot do it from the router. So capture interface and see if it's if it's working on the router side. So if I go to the router and I just um, I don't know. Let's let's um, okay. Let's give an IP address to the switch. Config the interface VLAN one IP address ten dot one dot thirty four dot say two hundred fifty two five five dot two five five two five five dot zero. No, no shot. And go through to one and try and tell that. I'll try and ping first. So ten dot one dot thirty four dot two fifty. So are we seeing any traffic? Yep, we are seeing that two fifty, and we got some replies. So we can we are monitoring the router's traffic as well. So if I tell net, for example, ten dot one dot thirty four dot two fifty. I'll see some 10 less traffic as well coming now from 34 to 250. Cool. Okay, cool. Let's go back to our slides. So if I go um, troubleshooting with a span overview, span allows administrators to deliver traffic to specialized specialized device such as packet analyzer and IPS intrusion prevention system. To be effective, an IPS must be able to inspect all traffic flow flowing in the network. Because modern networks are switched environment, SPAN is crucial for effective IPS operation. While IPS are more focused on security aspects of traffic, packet analyzers are commonly used for troubleshoot purposes. For troubleshooting purposes, for example, if a specific network application is taking too long to execute task. A network administrator might use SPAN to duplicate and redirect traffic to packet analyzer for capturing. The administrator can then analyze the traffic from all devices to troubleshoot suboptimal operation of the network application. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi. Bye bye.